Joining me now, Kara Eastman. Uh, Kara uh, is running in Nebraska's second district. And uh, Kara, I don't know if you know this, but I've been billing you as, as several different things. Uh, one is uh, Giant Killer. Uh, the other one is uh, the original Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. Uh, <laughs> since you won earlier than she did. Um, and so, uh, Kara, you, you're the giant killer because you already beat a Democratic incumbent uh, in, in the primary, and, uh, and he had been a congressman earlier. Now you're moving on uh, to the Republican. So, um, I know we talked to you about this a little bit before, but for those uh, that don't know, Tell us how you pulled off that upset victory in the primary first. Well, hi, I'm glad to be back. Um, <laughs> it, we we did it, I mean, in some ways, the old fashioned way by going out and knocking on doors and talking to voters. We knocked on over 60,000 doors in the primary, just asking people what they were looking for in their representative, uh, about the things that they care about, the issues that were impacting them. And so it was really just hard work. I mean, I think that Running on a bold, pragmatic, but progressive message also helped. And I'd like to think that I'm a good candidate. So maybe that helped too. <laughs> well, I think that we, we're pretty sure about that at this point. <laughs> uh, so at the time, it was 60,000 doors that you guys had knocked on. Um, how, how many is it now? Over 120,000. Uh, that's what I love. Hard work, volunteers, real people yeah. making a giant difference. Um, uh, you know, <laughs> I used to say on the show, we're coming to your house. We're coming to your house. And you did it. You literally, you went to their house. Right. Uh, and so uh, now here's encouraging news. Oftentimes, progressives don't get the backing of the Democratic Party after they win a primary. But it seems like in your case that, that they have uh, rallied behind you a little bit. Is that right? Yeah, actually, we have a lot of support, including from Barack Obama. So it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, we'll take it. Uh, bless. <laughs> Look, it's it's not like we're opposed to the Democratic Party helping progressives. We want that. That's a good right. thing. That's yeah. right. So Barack Obama's endorsed you. That's great. And uh, and has the party helped financially at all? They have. They have. Yeah. I mean, all the groups that stayed out in the primary have now come in. Um, we've got a lot of support from labor. A lot of support from the party. And, uh, and most importantly, we have support from individuals and uh, so many people who have donated from the district, outside the district. And uh, I'm really proud of the number of people who've gotten involved in the campaign. Yeah, look, uh, we were just running a promo during the break uh, as you know, we were going between uh, guests. And it was me talking a while back about taking over the Democratic ghost ship, but I mean, when you win a primary, you're the Democratic nominee, and uh, and it's a very winnable district. It'd be crazy not to help you. So, bang, that's it. You're now you know the 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 party in Nebraska's second district. So that's great. I just want people to understand that Cara did it. You can do it. Uh, we can all do it. And and so I, you know, in a lot of ways, you're an inspiration on that, and we appreciate that, Cara. Thank you. Thank you. And. Um, Okay, now let's talk about how winnable this race is. Uh, so your incumbent is uh, uh, Don Bacon, uh, and uh, and Trump came and rallied for him recently. Uh, God help him, uh, or don't. Uh, anyway, so first off, uh, how close is the race? It's close, and we have polls showing that we're in a dead heat. He's got polls showing him up. And so that means that I just need everybody to keep supporting and we need to get as many people out there voting as possible because it's really gonna come down to turnout as in most other races around the country. But the, the fact that we double Democratic turnout in the primary in May is pretty significant. Yeah, and uh, look, it, Carr is a just Democrat. That means she does not take corporate PAC money. And so, and she raised an unbelievable amount of money in the last quarter, 1.2 over 1.2 million. But average donation is 47 bucks. So uh, no, no, it's down to 19 dollars and 70 cents. Oh, is that right? Okay, then my notes yeah. are wrong. Okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> wow, that's an yeah. amazing amount of money to raise from small donors. An amazing amount. So, but you got you got to do that because the other side has all the corporate PAC money and. And in a race that's winnable, even the Democratic Party thinks it's winnable. Like you gotta, that's you gotta put her over the top. So I don't hide my opinions. I'm a million percent behind Kara, and and I and from day one, right? So uh, now let's talk about um, 
Bacon's record a little bit. Uh, and how bad is he in, in terms of being a, a right wing conservative back in Trump? I don't think it can get much worse. His voting record has been 98% with the president. He's voted to take away health care, voted for the ridiculously horrible tax bill. He, uh, he, the problem with him is that he, he, he has a good talk. He tells people he stands with dreamers and he stands for TPS and, and then he votes for the border wall. So he's, he's not representing the values of the people of the district. He's not representing the values of Americans. And uh, he, needs to, he needs to be replaced. Yeah, and, um, and, and especially in Nebraska, Cara, if you win, it's a, it's a major victory for progressives all over. Because we were told that, that we couldn't win in places like Nebraska and we couldn't beat Republican incumbents. So uh, I, I just think that your race is one of the most important ones in the country. So uh, l let's talk about why you got into it in the first place though, because you're, you're not a politician. So what possessed you to run and then there was a powerful Democratic incumbent in the race, well, why'd you do it? I made the decision to run in 2016, actually before the presidential election, after my mom was diagnosed with cancer for the fifth time and prescribed a pill that was $2,500 $2, that she couldn't afford to take. And, and I learned at that point that she was also paying $800 a month for her prescriptions. She had a lot of illnesses, including cancer. And at that time, we were hearing so much about repealing or replacing the Affordable Care Act. But we weren't really hearing about people like my mom. And now that I've been doing this for as long as I have, for over a year and a half campaigning, I just I meet people every day who are telling me that they are struggling with the same issue. I met a woman who said her family's paying $18,000 a month for her prescriptions. This is outrageous. And uh, you know, at, the, at that time, when my mom told me about this, I remember thinking that this, this was going to be such a significant piece of our life. And my mom actually ended up passing away a year ago and wasn't able to leave the house because she wasn't able to take that pill. And I don't want anybody in the United States to have to go through what my mom went through. My husband and I just finished paying an attorney to help us with all those medical bills that were coming to us after my mom passed away. And again, I've met way too many people that are struggling with the same issue. And so I got into this because I wanna work on healthcare. That's my background, I'm a social worker. I've been running nonprofits that focus on health and other social, racial, environmental justice issues. And I, I think I'm somebody that could actually go in and, and get things done or at least work my butt off trying. Did you say $18,000 a month and $25,000 for a pill? Yep. I mean, what, this is madness. I mean, madness. that's just people saying the rich can live. I mean, and you gotta be super rich to afford either one of those bills. And everybody else, go ahead and die. Uh, I mean, privatizing sneakers and jeans makes sense. Privatizing healthcare means the rich live and the rest of us die. That's crazy, that's crazy. So, okay, now in your district, is the mess, is the word out that that's crazy? I've been hearing all across the country, number one issue that, that people are talking about, it's either corruption, money in politics, et cetera, or healthcare. Is, is that the same thing in Nebraska? Absolutely, healthcare is the number one thing people talk to me at the doors about. And look, there, there are people who don't think that Medicare for all is the solution or they don't, they they haven't read the the expanded and improved Medicare for All Act, so this idea of this umbrella term Medicare for All isn't isn't for them. But what we do talk about is the fact that prescription drugs are out of control, and they agree that we need to do something about them. And I was talking to some healthcare professionals last night, who after talking to me for a few minutes said, oh, now I, now I understand this issue. I talked to a conservative the other day who asked me how we pay for Medicare for all. I gave him three sentences and he said, okay, I, I'm with you, I'm voting for you. I think we've just gotten used to the fact that we all pay high deductibles, co-pays, premiums, out-of-pocket costs, and that there, and we are aware that there's another system out there that could be a lot better for all of us. I mean, the average family of four making $54,000 a year is paying $10,000 a year for healthcare. That's insane, it's so much money and, and it doesn't have to be like that. Yeah, it, it, like I said, it's one thing when other corporations crush us for profit, it's another one, it's the healthcare industry. So just again, out of curiosity, in Nebraska, you got healthcare, uh, is, is corruption in, in the top two like everywhere else? 
uh, or is it another issue? And if, and if it is, what, what's the third? Uh, corruption comes up a lot. I actually have an organizer on my team who is an expert at flipping Republican votes by talking about corruption and the fact that I'm not taking corporate PAC money. But education comes up a lot at the doors, um, and especially student debt. I'm on the board of governors of our community college, which is an elected position, and uh, and that's something that I'm really passionate about. The, the third thing that people talk about, although Kavanaugh has been uh, coming up a lot lately, is school shootings. We've been victimized by school shootings and have had mass shootings in our own community. And people are looking for policymakers to take proactive um, stances on common sense gun safety regulation. Oh man, it's so winnable. All right, so we got to put it over the top. Uh, and Cara is one of the original progressives uh, who ran and, and was bold. Uh, so EastmanForCongress.com. Uh, make sure, please, you go to the website, find out more, donate, volunteer, do all you can. Uh, so we can show everybody uh, how progressives do it anywhere in the country, including in Nebraska. Kari Eastman, thank you uh, for joining us, appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching this free clip of Rebel Headquarters. Don't forget to become a TYT member today for more exclusive content. Join now at tyt.com slash join.